Well, basically, there's three types of skin cancer. The first type, the most common and least dangerous, is that of basal cell carcinoma. It often looks like a pearly, somewhat translucent papule, most commonly on the face and on the areas that are exposed to the sun. The second most common type, and the second least dangerous type, which kills about 3,000 people a year, is that of squamous cell carcinoma. And that appears as red, scaly patches, most commonly on the face, ears, and back of the hands. And the third, which is the most dangerous type, which is malignant melanoma, which kills about 8,500 people a year, um, is, occurs as a brown patch, irregular in shape. It has the ABCDs. A, which is asymmetry, B, which is border, an irregular border, often with notching. C is the color somewhat irregular, light brown, dark brown, sometimes red or black in it. And D is for the diameter. Some people add E for elevation because as it, as it becomes more elevated, the risk would increase. The only way to really know is to have an expert who's, who's qualified to look at this, and this would be a dermatologist who spent many years in training, just so they could better be able to diagnose this on site. In most cases, a biopsy, a test of the area, is not necessary. However, in some cases, it's very hard to distinguish. In other cases, we may use a special machine called dioscopy, where we're able to get a closer look at the area. Sometimes we'll use photography and other measures to help us follow the lesions. Skin cancer occurs more commonly in people who have a family history of skin cancer as well as a personal history of skin cancer. That means that somebody in their family had it or they themselves have had it. Uh, people with a history of, of, of skin cancer as I said, has, have a greater risk of getting it, also if their family has had it. The second major point is, is, the, is the, their skin type. If their skin type is types 1 through 4, they have a greater risk of developing skin cancer. If they have a lot of freckles, a history of sunburns, these also increase their risk of skin cancer. Well, it really depends which type of skin cancer we're talking about. The best treatment for basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma is known as Mohs Micrographic Skin Cancer Surgery. In that technique, a person who has a, uh, a special fellowship in Mohs Micrographic Skin Cancer Surgery, he cuts it out layer by layer until the lesion is completely removed. By using this technique, one is able to cut out the least amount of tissue possible and leave the smallest scar and yet, surprisingly, in all the studies, have the highest cure rate. There's many other techniques, radiation. The most common technique besides most surgery would be that of excision or scraping. Now for malignant melanoma, the only technique that I would use be that of excision with a proper margin, which means enough of a border around it, so that therefore we're certain that the cancer is completely out and it doesn't have any possibility or almost no possibility of spreading to another part of your body where it could be of tremendous harm to you. Fortunately, the cure rates for these are very high, often over 99%. For, for most surgery and for other types of surgeries, it could be of 95 to 98 percent depending upon the studies. So fortunately, once we have it out, it rarely recurs. However, that being said, a person, once they've had a, a malignant melanoma, they may be at a significantly greater risk of developing a second or third lesion, as is true with basal cell and squamous cell. So it's very unlikely to, to reoccur, however, it it's a greater possibility you'll, you'll get a second lesion. So therefore, repeated visits to the doctor after you've had this diagnosis on a more frequent basis, perhaps every three to six months for malignant melanoma or once a year for basal cell and squamous cell cancer.